Hi everyone, welcome back. In late 2022, Spring Boot 3 and Spring Framework 6 delivered one of the biggest shifts we'd seen in the Spring ecosystem. They introduced a Java 17 baseline, migrated packages from Javax Asterisk to Jakarta Asterisk, and even brought early support for Gralvium native images. Now in 2025, the next generation is almost here, Spring Boot 4 and Spring Framework 7. These releases continue the modernization journey. They adopt the latest Java features, align tightly with Jakarta EE 11, improve developer productivity, and add more resilient cloud-ready support right out of the box. Let's dive into the key changes you need to know. First, let's talk baselines. Java 17 remains the minimum requirement thanks to its industry-wide adoption. But if you want the newest JVM benefits like virtual threads and other language enhancements, Java 21 or Java 25 are strongly recommended. With Spring Framework 7, Jakarta EE 11 is now fully adopted. That includes Servlet 6.1, JPA 3.2 and Bean Validation 3.1. On the Kotlin side, version 2.2 and above is supported, bringing smoother coroutine integration and making reactive code even more natural. These baselines ensure your applications are ready for the future while staying compatible with modern cloud environments. Let's begin with Spring Boot 4 highlights. The first one is native image improvements. Spring Boot 4 pushes GraalVM native image support even further. It's fully aligned with GraalVM 24. Ahead of time, AOT processing has been enhanced, which means faster build times and a smaller startup memory footprint. For example, Spring Data now introduces AOT repositories. During AOT processing, query methods are turned into source code and compiled directly with your app. That makes native images start faster and use fewer resources. Next, observability with Micrometer 2 and OpenTelemetry. Cloud native apps need excellent observability. Spring Boot 3 first introduced Spring observability. Now Spring Boot 4 upgrades to Micrometer 2 and integrates an OpenTelemetry starter. This means your traces, logs and metrics work seamlessly together out of the box. Troubleshooting and performance monitoring become far simpler for modern distributed systems. Next, let's talk about improved SSSL health reporting. SSL monitoring is now smarter. If a certificate chain contains certificates that are expiring soon, you will now see them in a new expiring chain's entry. The previous will expire soon status is gone. Instead, expiring certificates are reported as valid but flagged under expiring chains, reducing false alarms while keeping you informed about certificate health. Next, modularization. One of the earliest milestones for Spring Boot 4 was refactoring its code base into a more modular structure. In Spring Boot 3, many core modules like auto configuration, starter dependencies and build tools were bundled into larger artifacts. This was convenient but sometimes made dependency management tricky and increased native image footprints. Starting with Spring Boot 4, auto configurations and support code are split into smaller, more focused modules. This modularization leads to faster builds and native image generation because GraalVM doesn't process unnecessary hints, cleaner dependency management as optional integrations, micrometer, open telemetry, persistence tech are now separate modules. Better maintainability for the Spring team and contributors. As developers, you might not notice the change if you are using starter dependencies. For example, adding JPA with Hibernate is still as simple as adding this Spring Boot Starter Data JPA single dependency. Under the hood though, JPA auto configuration, Hibernate integration and validation setup are now in separate modules. If you are not using starter dependencies, you will need to review the new module structure. Details are available on the Spring Boot GitHub wiki. Next let's talk about a new at configuration properties source annotation. Another feature improving modularization is the at configuration properties source annotation. This doesn't change how configuration properties are bound at runtime. 
Instead, it's a hint for the Spring Boot configuration processor at build time. In modular projects, property metadata could become incomplete if base classes or nested types lived in different modules. By marking a class with that configuration property source, you ensure full metadata generation even if the class itself isn't directly annotated with that configuration properties. This eliminates missing descriptions or default values in multi-module setups, making configuration processing more reliable and maintenance easier. Now let's discuss the Spring Framework 7 highlights. First one, testing improvements. Spring uses context caching to balance test performance and isolation. But in previous versions, long-running integration tests could still consume resources while idle. Spring Framework 7 introduces a test context pausing. Now Spring can pause and resume context in the cache, saving memory and speeding up execution in large test suites. Another addition is REST as client, a lightweight client for testing REST endpoints, similar to web test client but without reactive dependencies. Next, let's talk about API versioning. One of the most requested features now arrives, first class API versioning. Instead of rolling your own versioning strategies, Spring now supports version attributes directly. For example, you can see in the get mapping annotation, we can now use a version attribute to specify the version. This is awesome. You can also version at the controller level. In the request mapping annotation, you can see the version attribute to specify the version. Next, declarative HTTP clients with that HTTP service client. Spring 7 now includes declarative HTTP client support inspired by Fain but lighter and fully integrated. For example, we can create a REST client using at HTTP service client. Next, the Christmas Joy client can then be injected into controllers or services as usual. Next, multiple task decorator beans. In older versions, you could only register one task decorator. Now Spring 7 lets you declare multiple decorators and Spring will chain them automatically. For example, you can see there are two decorators for logging and timing. This eliminates boilerplate composite decorators and simplifies async customization. Next, null safety with JSPecify. Null ability annotations have been all over the place in the Java ecosystem at non-null, at nullable, at not null, etc. With Spring Framework 7, the team adopts JSPecify as the standard. Next, deprecations and removals. With modernization comes cleanup. The Javax packages are removed, only Jakarta E11 is supported. Jackson 2.x support is dropped, upgrade to Jackson 3.x. Spring J, CL logging bridge is gone in favor of patchy commons logging. Unit 4, support is deprecated, migrate to Unit 5. Plan these migrations early to avoid surprises. Let's wrap up. Spring Boot 4 and Spring Framework 7 are not just incremental updates. They represent a modern, modular, cloud native era for Java developers. Thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, hit like. Subscribe for more Spring Insights and drop a comment. Which new feature are you most excited to try in Spring Boot 4 or Spring Framework 7? See you in the next video.